Hi, I know I'm early. Just look at how dark I look. It's a gloomy day. I look fine. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Can you hear me? Yes, you are very loud. Okay, I'll reduce it now. Let's see what enough? others. Uh, well, I think it makes it'll make more sense when others come if you're much louder than they are. But there's definitely like it sounds like you're in an airplane. There's like background white noise. Yeah, it's so sitting in a home, so well, there shouldn't be background noise. Okay, let me try I'm using this uh, mic. Mm -hmm. Now it's gone. They're quieter, but it's still there. Okay. It's not a big deal. All right. Thank you so much it's for joining. It's not the best. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Are you in Washington State? No, I am in San Diego right now. Okay. Yeah. Now I it's work the... here. I see. Yeah, the Zoom link. I was like, W U S T L. <laughs> Tax. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I get yeah. what is that? Wash, Wash University in St. Louis. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. But you're not there. Yeah, I'm not there. <clears throat> St. Louis, Missouri. Right. Not Washington State. Yeah. I'm just take a few minutes to set up the stream. <clears throat> over yeah, the I'm aware. We're super early. <laughs> wanted to make sure that I looked uh, it's dark outside I was like do I have to turn a light on no yeah. it's fine <laughs> I don't have to turn the light on awesome yeah so all the panelists will be co-host I'm just pinning you setting them on that
Morning, everyone. I assume we're just waiting until it's uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, I wanted to acknowledge that people are in the room already, and I see hey, you. Hi. I follow you, Jen. I'm yes. <laughs> I'll be waiting too. I'm excited to be here, everybody. I hate silence. Like, what's <laughs> happening? Am I in the right place? Oh no. Oh, Pawan, now we can't hear you at all. And you'll have to tell us how I should pronounce your name properly. Can you hear me now? Uh, better? Okay. Yes. Pawan, yeah, you're perfect. <coughs> Thank you, Pawan. Yeah. Jen. Well, <laughs> welcome, Eric. Uh, Eric, right? Yeah. <coughs> and Zen Marco. Uh, uh, Matt may not be joining because of his family emergency came up, so he's not going to join. So we have three panelists uh, with that, and I welcome all of you on board. And thank you so much for your time today, Saturday morning. <laughs> well, glad to be here also, uh, Pawan, and uh, thank you for having us. I think uh, Jennifer, I think we're all waiting for, for the host to get started yeah, and say something. <laughs> oh, I would. I'm bossy. I'm just bossy. I can't help it. Uh, I was just checking your streams and everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> God, do that. Okay. Um, yeah, in I think a couple of minutes, we I'll get started, but I can share my screen and get everything ready. So. Uh, just making co-host to all the panelists so that you know in case if you want to say anything or you have all the permissions for that and pinning right. everyone. Uh, all right here we go perfect hmm. And let's do the magic of sharing screen. Sometimes it's, it's weird. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I was just you just wanted to say I think I'll be said over social media that the registration we started very late, like <laughs> uh, five days ago. But I think the response from people has been phenomenal, and I was not expecting you know that wide response from twenty countries, people joining, and I don't know how many time zones, but glad that people came in and all you know all goes to the panelist and. And the people who supported over online with Twitter and so really happy to help so many people across the globe, right? <laughs> All right. Well, it was beautiful work you do, uh, Pawan, and we appreciate that. You know, I think we all We'll have a story. I come from STEM myself, so I'll, I'll be happy to tell a bit of my story. I come from France, uh, yeah. study on my PhD in the US. I see most people are in the US here so far, except we have Jennifer and uh, we, have, we have a few Canadians, someone from Germany. Welcome. Nice to have you here. South Africa and India in the house too. Ah, uh, here we go. They're coming in. Yes. My goodness. Yeah, we have people from Austria, Australia, and 
Germany, China, South Africa, Niger Nigeria. So Canada from Spain now. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a beauty of the internet. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. obviously with with the pandemic in twenty twenty, uh, Zoom became very very popular, but. You know, I've been using Zoom for, for the past seven years in my consulting business and working with uh, clients from all over the world. And it's pretty amazing, you know, when you think about it, be con connecting with anybody in the world just like that. It's, uh, it's really amazing. Uh, I'll throw my hat in there too. I think that one of the coolest parts about, um, I mean, I guess the silver lining of everything that's happened for me since, you know, uh, summer 2020 has just been the amount of people I've been able to talk to from all over the world, from different backgrounds. Um, and it's been really cool to be able to be a part of that and to, to see it happen. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know how, how things work, but it's really, I like the people, you know, the way the pandemic, you know, helped different ways in different region of the world or, or did, did wrong. But one thing is good happen and everyone is saying that now things are global. No, people don't hesitate to come on virtual space and talk things earlier. They were, okay, it doesn't feel like, you know, person is in person is like more human. <laughs> so yeah, that that's, that's a beauty. And I'm sorry you may hear children, child noise because we have a newborn. So, uh, and you will hear this. It's morning time, feeding time. And she is having a bit colic behavior from yesterday. So, <laughs> I'm sorry and please pardon for that. That's 100% uh. okay. And I'm so glad that I am past that phase now with my 18 month old. Like, so, yeah. Pawan, uh, thank you for doing this. And with, I don't mind the background. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> all right so let's get started with our agenda everyone uh, you know can see my screen is that looking you know visible to everyone okay yep. just just use the chat um in case if you have any questions um or comments so with that let's get started with our event for today um first of all welcome everyone uh the panelists the 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 participants uh, on this event uh, on panel discussion on personal branding and networking on LinkedIn for industry transition. So the topic is very, very specific. I'll, and the reason I kept like this because LinkedIn is so wide and, and it's hard to discuss in 15 minutes, everything, right? So so keep your focus on, you know, um, especially the participant asking question, keep focus on the, this part of it. So that the panelist gets give you exactly what you want uh, and and help you. So with that, I'll get started. Um, so, so first, housekeeping as ritual. I know all of you now aware, so I don't have to read all that. But ensure that uh, you keep yourself muted. Use webcam. It, it's not you know mandatory. Um, and use all the features in the Zoom which you are all aware. So, um, so I'll give you a very uh, capsule view of iSTEM Care. So it is spin out of pandemic uh, in postdoc life. I was like, I my journey is very much like uh, coming from where rural areas in northern India, uh, lower Himalaya a region, and. My parents are farmers, they still do farming in there. Um, and I don't have very strong primary education, but I don't know how it worked out. And I came into STEM and did PhD, then did industry job and and, and then did postdoc in, in WashU. And now I'm working at Illumina as a scientist, uh, developing cancer diagnostics assays for better management of patients uh, in clinic. So, I stem care was something my passion. I was like, I really struggled. So I thought not everyone should go through that journey. And that's where it came out while discussing with friends. We should do something. And, and you know, every time say, if you design something, somebody will say it exists already, right? But still there is a, so much need. You have 9 billion people over the world, you know, 
and and there is no limit so that's why we we thought to create this global organization and not just limit to us or any country and and the whole focus i think we we want to go to developing world uh because there is lot to be done there there is lot demand and and people are not getting everything so we thought to have inclusive we have volunteers from i think 15 20 countries and and that's the strength we can create organization like that uh it has to be holistic and we are scientists so we based our all the ideas on evidence not just gut feeling and emotions and it's a free access and and the most important thing that we emphasize we understand what what has all of us i think volunteering uh were doing it they they have been through this process and that's how we understand uh, the problem the overall mission is very straight forward uh to to works towards empowerment of stem community across the globe um so ambitious but uh let's see how it comes in future and the whole idea is to be collaborative uh, it is not a classroom format it is more of a collaborative format and and, and support people in the stem community we have a lot of initiatives uh we been doing webinars initially but recently uh focused on workshops last year a lot um we conduct the system professional chat podcast or a uh, interview series uh, we did especially first season went for people who undertook a totally career different career than their education for example somebody did btech in biotech or bachelor's in biotech but they become a lawyer uh or they become economist so how did they switch so so drastic and that was the whole idea uh, and next season will start soon um we have a small team doing stem com not very active as now but stem learning team is is really doing great job uh, with these these sessions and and <clears throat> so still new programs are coming on mental health a huge demand especially in developing world really people don't know what to do with these two year disruption so uh, a small thing i started you know this icitt program when i got industry job after so much struggle uh, so i thought maybe give back to people and and the whole idea is based on self struggle and learning i i had and and this program is totally non profit we don't i don't charge anything for anyone so but the seats are limited 25 people and whole you know i do ask them to do donation to non profit so that the you get serious people on board <laughs> otherwise people join and they just don't want to be you know following things uh so the whole idea and and this this panel discussion is spin out from that program uh, while i'm doing that i thought to get experts on board and help people at broader area you know broader scale uh so this is the whole you know topics we have been going through we have reached to the linkedin and the panel discussions will continue so these panel discussions are learning series not just one is sporadic event i just wanted to let all the participants know that the next one will come on job search strategies next one is interview preparation you know a lot of things immigration employment you know negotiation so so you're going to be learning for till may a lot of panel discussion so stay tuned for that um and with that i'll stop speaking much and i'll give a uh, mic to the panelists to introduce themselves and we can go in the order we have uh, the the slide uh, image you know the four profile organized so maybe eric can go first and then you know matt is did, couldn't join uh, 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 and then we can go jennifer and anji so over to you eric uh, Hey yeah um Pawan thank you um so much for uh putting this on and for for doing what you're doing um I feel like I need to uh, I I am not a STEM person um I am a humanities background my PhD is in rhetoric communication and information design um and so I just I I I feel like I should <laughs> why why am I here I'm talking to STEM folks um I think that you have so much value and that is to be able to communicate that value is 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 a is an issue of translation and, and like I'm the the thing that I do I'm the founder of Translate Academia um we have we have value and it's a matter of translating it 
Um, and that's just a really fun thing for me to do. I've been able to help um, I have a whole lot of people um, in the past uh, 18 months building what I built. I actually met Jennifer uh, last summer, kind of building the same thing with Higher Higher Ed. That's how we first got introduced. Um, and I just, I'm really excited to be able to be here and to be able to talk into this kind of, this group of people that's just so varied, like I was talking about before. Um, and so thank you for letting me be here. Um, I'd be happy to connect with everybody on LinkedIn. And I also do a whole bunch of, um, I know that I don't think that um, India has TikTok, um, but for other people that are, that are out there, I do a lot of stuff on TikTok as well for how to brand yourself on LinkedIn. Um, I'll pass it over to Jennifer. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much, Eric. So uh, Jennifer Polk, you can call me Jen. Uh, I spell that J-E-N, but I'm not offended <laughs> if you put two N's in there. Uh, I also have a PhD in humanities like Eric. My business is from PhD to life. And you might know me from the internet. My main uh, social is Twitter. I've been active on there for many years now. Uh, I finished my PhD 10 years ago last month. So it's been a while. And uh, yeah, my business from PhD to life, as I said, what I do these days is I help PhDs uh, get clear on their career path so they can confidently market themselves for jobs they actually want. So the topic today is right up my alley. Uh, and over the years, I've worked with hundreds of PhD clients and probably most of them in STEM. I give talks and workshops at universities um, and I also do occasional uh, one-off, one-on-one -on -one -on -one consultations. But my main thing that I love doing these days is a online program, the PhD Career Clarity Program. That's a paid program. Uh, so if, if that's something that's, um, if you got the budget uh, and you want some additional support, uh, you can uh, check that out. You can go to my website from phd2life.com, learn lots more or get at me on the socials. Uh, yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, Jean-Michel, you're next. You're muted if you're trying to talk. Okay, that's better. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for inviting me. I'm uh, really, uh, really excited to be here and hopefully sh sharing uh, some of my experience to uh, to help you uh, to help you today. Um, I'll just uh, so you know, my my clients. Uh, let's share you a few slides, maybe just uh, just to show you a little bit of my uh, STEM journey. Maybe that's kind of more fun that way. I'll do my screen sharing here. So, you know, my client called me, my clients call me the LinkedIn rocket science scientist because uh, guess what? I used to design rockets. I used to design power plants and rockets. And uh, yeah, it's a French name, Jean-Michel, it's a little tough. So a lot of my clients uh, had up calling me, uh, you know, Jean-Luc or, or Captain Jean-Luc of the enterprise, okay, so the USS enterprise. So that's okay too, right? You can call me Captain if you want. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, I was very young uh, and, uh, you know, I was five years old when I watched Neil Armstrong uh, step on the moon, you know, and that, that, uh, that they ignited uh, uh, a passion for space and aerospace uh, when I was very young, you know, and I was very fascinated with physics because I was always uh, interested in learning about the working of the universe, right? So I come from a family of engineers. So my dad was a patent engineer uh, in the automotive industry. Actually, I have a young uncle in the, uh, my dad's youngest brother, uh, Jean-Pierre, who lives in Montreal, Canada, who is a world renowned uh, uh, dam and hydroelectric uh, plant builder and civil engineer. My mom was a math teacher in high school. My dad uh, pushed me to go to Ecole Centrale of Paris, you know, so the, the top professional uh, engineering school in France. So I followed his footsteps um, after getting my PhD, my, my master with, with uh, University of Paris 13. So I come from software development and, and computer science. You know, in France, we all have to do our military time. So I was, uh, at the time, there was, there was, uh, mandatory for all boys so uh so i went into uh, uh into uh the military as a scientist and i had the chance to work with the french energy atomic commission the cea of sacre 
And I used to launch, uh, you know, uh, launch with my aunts, my dad's two old, oldest uh, uh, sisters, who were the first female engineers to, to work on designing the Phoenix and, and Super Phoenix nuclear reactor in France. So it was a really exciting time for me. So I was 24 years old. I was on top of the world, guys. And, and I was offered a job by the CEA, CEA you know, with, with my P degree, I could have any job I wanted. And something happened. I had a very, very powerful dream. And in that dream, I was looking for my soulmate. And I knew I had to travel to a far away country to find her. And about the same time, I was offered the opportunity to study on my PhD at the University of New Mexico. Okay, so guess what? Here we go. I packed my, my suitcase with a few books and uh, a few books and uh, and uh, some clothing. And yeah, I go with, you know, speak, uh, barely speaking English. So you think you can hardly understand me now. Imagine what it was 30 years ago, right? But uh, it, was, it was a really exciting experience because, you know, I worked with some great mentors. You know, my boss and mentor has really helped me navigate that new, that new, uh, you know, uh, that new world. And so I was, I was able to fulfill my dream of, of designing spacecraft. You know, I worked with, with a major uh, aerospace company, National Laboratories in the U.S. So it's been really exciting. But it's during that time that I had the opportunity to start teaching, you know, and, and that's really when I discovered my passion for mentoring and coaching others. So, you know, we don't always find our ikigai early in life, right? Because, you know, and that's something we teach as, as career coach and Jennifer and, and Jennifer and Eric will tell you, it's very important you have clarity of what you want to be doing first, right? Before we start thinking about looking for jobs and branding yourself. So uh, long story short, I come from STEM. I've done some exciting, exciting things, you know, in, in engineering. I have, I have uh, over 150 publications. I'm well known in a number of, of fields as an engineer, but I reinvented myself seven years ago, you know, as, as a career coach and LinkedIn trainer. You know, so so I uh, I took a big turn in my career myself, right? And uh, so some of my specialties are helping professional brand themselves, identify their ikigai, reason for being, you know, uh, what is our purpose in life, right? And uh, what are we supposed to be doing? How are we supposed to use our special gift to make a difference in the world right now? And we're all asking those questions right now, right? Because uh, the pandemic has pushed us, helped us to question what real thing really matters in our lives, right? And that's one reason why we're here too also, you know, because a lot of us are in transition asking those questions. And uh, so anyway, enough, enough about me. I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, of, of my own journey there, you know, and, uh, and eventually finding, finding my own reason of being. And I hope you find yours too. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> all the panelists for, you know, your intro. And I really learned a lot. And I just wanted to not, you know, let you know that <clears throat> Eric has been doing a lot of uh, profile reviews for LinkedIn recently on TikTok. And I've been following, so in case if in future if you want help or anything you know or jennifer also very active all the all these people you know uh, the whole i just wanted to give you a context that how did i meet these people and i they're not my like childhood friend but the only way we meet is on linkedin via networking and 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 they're happy to hear to come on board and you know uh, quickly to help others right so so that's the power of LinkedIn, power of networking. And and you see here in action. So so try to be, and that's what we are gonna talk today. Whole topic is on that. So let's not, uh, you know, without further delay, I'll move on to the next step. Um, I'll just pull my screen, uh, right? I stopped sharing when Zine was uh, sharing, so. Can you, uh, is it possible, can you stop sharing so that I can just 
full. Uh, There's no one sharing. Not that I see. No share. No, no sharing. Okay. Uh, let me try then. Um, okay. I I have disconnected the balance. I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Sorry. <laughs> so no, I'm not sure what happened. Okay. Some people wanted live uh, transcription, so I just enabled that. Okay. So just give me a second. Um, maybe it's my my end. Uh, I okay. It came out now. So. I stopped sharing because I thought it may conflict with you. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Now I think we are set. Uh, everyone can see my screen, right? Okay. Awesome. So before we go into discussion, I just wanted to give you, you know, all the participant a capsule a snapshot of the topic so that we utilize our time to discuss more relevant things, uh, you know, more detail about the problems. And I already got a lot of questions from all of you. And I have passed that questions to the panelists yesterday. Um, and, and they are aware of it. So we have we have tried to categorize and we'll discuss out as much as possible today. So the personal branding is a sold out term, right? It's a lot of people say, okay, let's you should do personal branding and it's a lot of confusion uh, and I, even I was confused. So, but let me, you know, give with this. So personal branding is something like, it's not like selling yourself, but it's like branding yourself. So you don't have to lie or you're not doing marketing or selling things, but you're just genuinely trying to build the best out of you on table. Um, and so the people know it. And if people don't know about it, then you don't exist. This is as simple as it is, right? So, so that's the whole purpose of personal branding to develop social brand. And that's why we have people from social background here on board, <laughs> because it's a social brand. So STEM people may not be too much expert in that, right? So that's the whole idea to have people and cheat. Yerek was asking why. <laughs> so, so that's why. Uh, um, and it is about, okay, so there's a misalignment, but the whole idea is that it is related to popularity, confidence, status, and determination, and reputation, and self fulfillment. Uh, on the left, right hand side, a funny image that everybody looks the same, but there is someone who is upside down. Uh, uh, and he, he's trying to show that he is different. So, the whole purpose and personal branding that you are trying to show that how unique, how you are unique, and how different you are uh, from other people, right? Um, while LinkedIn, I still a lot of people, I get people, you know, scientists or researchers or postdocs, PhDs asking, why should I use LinkedIn? And I don't understand why, you know, why should not, right? So we, we have 200 countries on the planet and 675 million people on board, right? Still, it is skewed towards Europe and US, a uh, large part, this whole population of China or, or you know, uh, Africa, Asia Pacific uh, is not on board uh, on LinkedIn, uh, but it's a it's a huge way to give back to the other countries from developing, from developed to developed countries. So you have 100 million jobs posted every month. There's a lot of statistics. Not gonna read everything, but it's a lot of value in LinkedIn. And all of you who are on board today, I'm sure that you already know about it. But when it comes to LinkedIn profile, people say, okay, let's take my CV and translate it to, to, to copy it to LinkedIn, right? So, but it is not like that. It is, it is something different. That's why it, it, it exists. Otherwise, why do you have LinkedIn profiles? So it is, uh, it's a common logic uh, that it's not your CV. Uh, it's not your cover letter. It's not your degree. Uh, it's, it's something different. Uh, and but even if you create a profile, I'm not going to go into detail of a uh, LinkedIn profile creation. And there is a YouTube video. Um, we had a workshop last time. I'll share on the link. And there is a lot of videos on, on you know, YouTube and everywhere you can learn and a lot of articles. But a lot of a struggle goes, you have a profile, but nobody is looking at it. 
you don't have much connections no one calls you and you don't have any recommendations so basically it's an active profile as um and then when you were starting to look for a job and suddenly people come and start looking at linkedin sending connection request and and immediately they are expecting that within one month i get a job referral everything should be done right so so much expectation but that's not networking that's like transaction so <laughs> if you, you did not put in the bank any amount you're going to transact and ask that okay give me back how it's going to work it's not going to work so uh and this is this is the situation most of time so it's not that something you know wrong with you that people are not talking to you listening to you not not referring liking your post on linkedin but it's something you need is personal branding and and but at the same time don't try to copy okay many time people do mistake go to others profile and and sometimes literally copy things or even they update their profile they copy their job description put it back you know they take their look at their post doc offer letter and copy that and put into their linkedin profile so it's not like that so the whole idea is that you are unique so you have to work on you to find out what you want to put on linkedin and what is your purpose um and the the whole whole game on linkedin or any social social or or digital space is keywords so same thing i told you that if i can't find you i can't hire you especially in this this age of uh, pandemic a lot of things has gone virtual hirings are on social medias all the advertisement goes there um about i was re- reading 80% of the jobs never get ad- advertised think of that you know so so and the whole 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 uh, whole process on linkedin is to network 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 because it is a seo based search engine optimization based uh, platform uh, which is most of social media and it uses ai ai algorithm to suggest you more networks as you start growing your networks so uh, that's the game so just wanted to give a small uh, one minute people some people asked on the question oh, during registration can you tell us a step by step guide small and i don't want to give pain to the panelist for that it's a long topic so just just start got something here so first thing is choose a right profile pic photo uh, don't take your facebook and you know and put it here um choose creative cover photo spend time designing your cover photo uh, based on your your profile optimize your profile for keywords uh, personalize your url uh, careful with you know your description and about section uh highlight up to 50 skills you can do if you want um include medias link to your profile write articles participate in other groups asking recommendation giving recommendation okay also you know give people recommendation i see sometimes people have 20 recommendation from other people but they never give even one to anyone and it's hard that nobody would have asked so <laughs> yeah, so um tune into connection request careful with that uh, engage this is the most important part on being active on linkedin and have visibility is to engage and and you can use analytics how do you engage a uh, lot of people say how what should i post i don't have anything to talk on linkedin because only when i have a publication or i have some achievement i am going to write something on linkedin but that's not the case there is a lot of options and experts here will tell you more but you can write articles on linkedin okay nobody is reviewing you nobody is going to penalize you if you write something you can join groups uh, help other people especially if you really want to be you know get help first try help others and that's what i think it works there uh, keep in touch ach- appreciates other people appreciate their achievement work and that's how you are going to be having you know fun on linkedin and you can link your linkedin to everywhere resume your signature everywhere an industry job it is a, nowadays a huge component of linkedin profile so this is a funnel where you have a cv cover letter fine but now linkedin profile is a key role to to have uh, find a job uh, especially to start a job but this is where the mistake people are doing most of time which i did it's not you alone um uh, so on the left hand side 
applicant strategy, right? They think that online advertisement, staffing agency, job portal, networking comes at the last priority. But actually, the recruiters are looking exactly opposite, upside down. So they rely more on internal referrals and networking. Then campus selection, which nowadays is not doesn't happen. So you have a LinkedIn, then you have a job portal they rely on. Last one, they rely on ads. So if, remember that they are hiring humans. They are not hiring robots. So to hire a human, they have to know about them, right? So if we don't know the person, how are we going to hire the person? So it's the same way like in life, in social life, we live, we, 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 we eco with someone who is more, we know little bit about than our phone person, right? Uh, uh, so networking, let me people ask how to network, but networking is not something mystical word. It is like a, a social connection, right? When you meet someone, HR, you are doing networking, attend an employer's info session, career event virtually, you are doing networking, meeting guest speakers, here meeting panelists, you can do networking, right? It's a huge opportunity to do networking on right now. Uh, talk with your family, friends, other, other people, post messages on LinkedIn and help others, right? So with that, hope I did not took a lot of time, but just to give, set up the set up the show i thought to just give this a small uh, intro um and let's get started uh uh with, with this so before i ask any questions uh probably um it would be nice to give uh to the panelists can give their experience on linkedin because that many people even don't you know value the linkedin the how it is helpful so if you can take two three minutes and just share you know your ideas and then we'll go into uh, especially related to job or something you encountered and which was very useful and then i'll go with a specific questions is that okay yeah um i'll uh thank you for that uh, that review i think there's a lot of solid advice that you went through Paman, um, about just like the things that we should be doing and i think it's really important for people to recognize that all of those things uh, that we're talking about they're available like like it's all there on linkedin or it's all there on the internet for free like you, like to, if you wonder like what should i be doing right you can go and find that out super duper easy but as we have this thread going on in the chats about like the biggest thing to do is what do we talk about what do what is our brand um and i i won't get into the details about how i went about discovering that process but for me it comes down to two things that everybody needs to be doing Right. You need to be engaging with people like you, you, you engage and talk to people. You, you want to discover um, what path you want to take, find people that, are, that have different paths than you and start talking to them and see if that resonates and then start following that path. The other thing I'd recommend that I mentioned in the path as well um, or in, in the thread is to get on LinkedIn learning. Don't take those courses to learn how to do something. Take those courses to learn how to talk about all of the things you've been doing for the past decade already. Um, if, you, if you like, we need to embrace, just embrace the fact that as an academic and as a teacher, you are nothing but content creators. All you do is create content. Now you just need to pivot. You just need to change your audience and change the genre to LinkedIn and to a more lay audience. And you have 10 years worth of, worth of, things that you can talk about. People love interesting intersections. You are an interesting intersection. Adriana Cavarero, um, I think, yeah, uh, Cavarero, she, one of my, my very favorite uh, things that she says um, is that each of us are unrepeatable and unique. Be unrepeatable and unique. Um, don't, don't go look for the shiny new job. Be the shiny employee that people want to seek out. Um, and there's a lot of things, different things we can do about that, but uh, it's going to take some learning, some humility, and some action. Like you, you have to hit post, you have to hit send. I'll pass it on. Yeah, cool. Uh, oh, Powen. Yeah. Did yeah, you so. want to have the slides still visible? I can stop. Yeah, it might be easier for folks. Uh, awesome. To Thank see you. Us. <laughs> So you asked um, how how we use LinkedIn, right? Um, and specifically in the context of jobs. Um, 
So let me let me answer that f for myself, of course. Um, so I'm self-employed and I, I'm not looking for a job right now. Um, so, and I also am unlikely to be looking for a job in future where recruiters are in play. So the way that I use LinkedIn and the way that I envision using LinkedIn is going to be slightly different from how other folks use it. I can hear typing. So uh, who's doing that? Like want to mute yourself. Um, so because recruiters won't be in play in any future job search that I am running, I don't think, uh, I, I'm, I'm, worried, I'm less worried about like putting the right keywords in my headline and in my about section and sprinkling throughout my experience section, right? Because that's really good strategy, but like that's not as important to me. What is important to me, right, after I've identified why, why I'm on LinkedIn in the first place, uh, that is to engage with folks in my professional community. Um, and I, for me, it's a super important tool because the folks who are in my field, whether other business owners, self-employed people, you know, other career coaches, um, transition coaches, but also folks that work in professional development and career services at universities, um, those, that community of professionals, right, that network of people, they all use LinkedIn. Uh, and it's a way for me to stay informed. It's a way for me to learn about what the latest is going on, right? I, that people post articles that they've written. They, yeah, they post about their experiences. Um, so I don't mean to belabor this point, but for me, it's less about like keywords and much more about engagement. So I remember on, on Powen's list about, you know, how, how do you like with the steps to take on LinkedIn and like engagement was down at the bottom as number 11 or something. And I was in my mind, I was like, put this, put an arrow beside it. Whoop. <laughs> like, because that's, how, why I use LinkedIn, right? So I, so I want you to take away, why are you on LinkedIn? And therefore I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Does that make sense folks? Right? So don't start with Paul and says, I have to do this. Why are you there? And then what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, I like that point, Jen. I think the idea was to, you know, it, it's like a bottom line. So <laughs> no, it's not wrong. It's just, that yeah. it really depends why you're here. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's awesome. So so important things are always said at the last. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, send Michael. Oh yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, I'll start where where Jennifer was there. Is that number one? You you really have to understand what you want out of LinkedIn, right? You have to understand where you want to go in your career. So. Before you do anything, you need to gain that clarity, okay? Once you have the clarity, then you can brand yourself. Now, what, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent for your online brand on LinkedIn. I'll tell you what, because right now, with, particularly with the pandemic, you know, you have had, we've had about four and a half million Americans quitting their job or changing job every month in the past year and a half, Okay. So in 2020, 50, 50 million people have quit their job in America only, okay? So it's a job hunter market, guys. It's an opportunity, right? Uh, so recruiters are looking for you. And you know, if, uh, if Matthew were there, I would tell you, you know, recruiter may spend uh, you know, many hours a day looking at about 800 to 1,000 profiles a day. And you know what the recruiter does all day long? They roll their eyes because they can find, you know, they can find a, a well-developed profile, right? People, so, so it's very important. Think of it as LinkedIn as your professional portfolio. You know, it, it's your, your professional portfolio that's going to carry you from now on to the rest of your career, okay? So usually my recommendation for that is you, your profile has two different aspects. You got your professional aspects, your highlight, your accomplishments, your awards, your recognition, you know, uh, the things you do well, great stories of accomplishment, but you also want to share a little bit of your personal story, you know. So usually I recommend you write in the first person, share some of your personal story, you know, and how it fits into what you're doing now and where you want to go next, okay? Because, you know, the recruiters, your next hiring manager, your next boss, they are just people, you know, 
and people are looking, you want to make that emotional connection with, with the reader, right? Because your boss, when your boss comes and says, okay, I've got, uh, you know, I've got, uh, you know, Mary, Joseph and Peter, right? And they are all have the, the same credentials, the same experience. Guess what? I'm going to hire the person I like, right? So, uh, so don't be afraid. And I know we, we all, you know, most of you, you're coming from science engineering. Most of us, we, we are <laughs> introvert, right? But guess what? You know, most of us are introvert anyway. <clears throat> but you have to put yourself out there a little bit. Start sharing a little bit of yourself and you're going to see that magic happens. You know, because now, number one, with more content and, and the right keywords and right SEO optimization, you can be discovered. I know someone asked a question about, do we need a premium account on LinkedIn? I'm going to say, yes, you need a premium account. I'll tell you why. Because you will be a featured applicant. What does that mean? It means that when a recruiter searches, all the premium account holders, candidates, we show before everybody who doesn't, have, who doesn't have a premium account. So that gives you an advantage, right? So it's only uh, maybe 20%. 20% of people on premium. So you're already beating 80% of your competition for a few dollars a month, okay. So, I mean, uh, I know it's an open-ended question with so much we need to talk about, right? But, uh, so start with your brand, your professional story, your personal story. And then after that, it's gonna be about networking with the right people, right? So, but anyway, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna stop there because we, we could talk about LinkedIn <laughs> forever. Now we're trying to get some, uh, structure into the discussion here, right? Oh, and I muted you. Ha. Power. <laughs> you were typing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does that, did that answer the question? I mean, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, Pauline is that, muted. Uh, so uh, if I can take over, I love uh, the question that he asked in the chat. Uh, how, how do folks share on LinkedIn if they are introverts? Shall we take that question, Colin? Um, yes, we can. I think there are, let me check. There were a lot of questions, right, from people. Uh, give me a minute. I'll just read their questions so that all the panelists get the context about that and all the participants too. So, there were question like, how do you overcome shyness on LinkedIn, and how should you avoid prete being pretentious? <laughs> um, how does one approach a company employees for referral? Um, how do you connect to your new people when you are an introvert? How to network when you have an imposter syndrome for valid reasons? I am um, not a social media person and do not want to be. Is it possible to switch into another industry without that presence? So these are the contexts. I just wanted to read these questions so so that you know um, we can. Now I think we Jennifer, you can get started. Uh, For sure. This, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So let me take up the introvert issue and say that uh, yeah, I think most of us are introverts. <laughs> right? I'm an introvert. Uh, I think people don't believe me when I say that, but trust me. Uh, introverts own the internet and LinkedIn is on the internet uh, because we might not want to be at all of the parties every night, but we do not have a problem engaging with other people <laughs> when they're not in the same room with us. <laughs> right? So I would really embrace uh, your introversion as a strength here. Uh, because it means that that you don't need to be in physical presence with other people. Uh, and and the time that you spend reflecting, uh, which I think might come more naturally to some introverts, maybe I'm wrong, but let's go with it. Um, that is a huge value. And to relate this to shyness. So shyness is a different thing. I'm introverted, but I am not shy. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I, I want to make, make sure you figure out what's going on. Is it, is it kind of, are, is this a new skill that you're just 
needing to develop and therefore it's uncomfortable and you have to, you know, take some steps and get some practice, right? That might be okay. Is this social anxiety, right? What type, what's going on? Can you get support around that? That's like a different thing. Um, are you introverted? And therefore maybe the internet is really, that's your party place. <laughs> because you don't have to be around other people. Um, so I, I would really encourage people like I, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but please make sure that you're not making excuses for yourself um, based on things that aren't actually true. And I also want to say, if it's a new skill that you have to de develop, it makes a lot, it it's, makes total sense that you might feel uncomfortable and that this might take some practice. Remember the first day you spent in the lab, right? If you're a lab-based uh, STEM person, it was weird, <laughs> right? The first time like you wrote an essay in any context, it was weird. So, you know, th th this is a new skill. You're a learner. It's okay. Um, I'm going to jump on that, Jen. And I, 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 I will be the asshole, right? Like, I think that there, there are uh, so many reasons that we can think of and that we can talk about ourselves into delaying action. Um, we can talk about the problems of the job market. We can talk about how frustrated we are with our PhD programs. There's, there is an endless cycle about things that we can talk about. There are endless webinars you can attend. There are countless resources that you can read. All of them are telling you to do one thing, act, right? And so we have this thread going, what do we do when we act? What are we trying to say? What are we trying to accomplish? If your job search is a thesis statement, you should hire me in this industry because of these reasons and because of my background. You now have a path, right? You have, you, have a, you have something where you're going and people love intersections. So if you have this interesting intersection, right? Be, you're just running on this path of where you're going and then you find something that's interesting to you, write about it. That's it. You are not creating content to get likes. You're not creating content to get engagement, right? I mean, that, that would be ideal. You are writing content so that when a recruiter lands on your profile page and they look at your activity section, the thing that is prioritized most in your LinkedIn profile, they will see who you are as a person. They'll see your ethos, your credibility. Be intentional with what you write about so that when somebody lands on your profile, they're like, oh, I, clearly this person knows how they fit into my space. If you're out there thinking, I could write about so many different things. What do I write about? That's going to be an endless discussion that you have with yourself. Pick a path and run, run, and then be ready to pivot. If you don't like it, go to something different. But all the while, what you're doing is you're engaging with people and you're engaging with the data algorithms. LinkedIn uses keywords to search for what you're doing. It's, they're not going to find you if you don't put in data. Remember that you're engaging with people and data equally. Um, so yeah, I would, I would, again, like for all those people who are saying, what do I write about? What do I write about? What have you been doing for the past 10 years? Like what have you been teaching? You have so many interesting things to say, say it on LinkedIn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, very interesting point. And I think I'm certainly they'll get benefit. Um, do you want to add Jean, Michael, to something to this? Yeah, I think we need to hear from Jean-Michel, but I, I'm always ready to talk, but please, Jean-Michel. I'm, I'm going now. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, so, no, uh, beautifully said, uh, Eric. So, um, I want to I want to, I want to talk about imposter syndrome first, okay? So, guess what? We all suffer from it on and off. I do, okay? And, and, and uh, yes, so, here, yeah, okay? And that's because it's very simple because most of us are perfectionists, right? And we love to learn. And you know, I'll tell you when I walk into a library, you know, at the university I was a professor, I could not help being amazed and overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge. You look at those thousands and thousands of books on the shelves, and this is just me and so many years to learn. How am I gonna learn everything there is to know in my industry, just in my industry, right? So it's overwhelming. So my advice to, to my clients typically, and particularly before an interview, is this, so if you take the time to really develop your LinkedIn profile, your resume, before you have to talk to someone, before you have to interview, read, read them again. 
it will boost your confidence back up. You're going to look at yourself and you can say, man, look, this is me. I have done all of this. Yes, that's me. It's not bad, actually. So, you know, it's going to help you regain your confidence before you engage someone, before you, you connect with someone on LinkedIn, right? So uh, the other question is, okay, so what do I say or I do? Okay, so I'll give you an advice that works well, and it's a little different than... than uh, <clears throat> Uh, so uh, ask for air, A-I-R, okay? So A, advice. So think about it, okay? So when I'm going when I'm to engage a professor, someone, uh, someone who is higher above me, right? I'm hiring a hiring manager, someone who has many more years of experience. Because what most likely, those people, they are leaders of some kind because they've proven themselves. You know, and if they come from academia, guess what? They love to teach, they love to coach, they love to give their own advice, right? We love to advise people who are younger and less experienced than us, right? Because guess what? It makes us feel good. First, it boosts our little ego, number one. It makes us feel good. It's a compliment. Someone comes to you to ask for advice. It's a compliment, right? And number two, we love to help because we have more experience, we have acquired leadership, leadership qualities. We love to share our knowledge and help others grow in their career, okay? So as for advice, so when you come after someone who has more experience than you, take advantage of that human quality, okay? Take advantage of that. It's, hey, you know, uh, I see you doing this, this, it's amazing. I'd, I'd like to ask for your advice. So that's how you get your foot in the door to get that conversation. Once you are in that conversation with that person, it's an eye in air, insight. Ask that person to give you insight to the industry, to the company. You know, maybe ask them to give you insight on, on how, how uh, you know, they did their own transition from, uh, <clears throat> from the science and academia to industry, for example, you know. And, and finally, at the end, Recommendation, A-I-R, R for recommendation. Now at the end, ask for their recommendation. Can they connect you with the right person to talk to, etc. Okay, so try, try that strategy. Take advantage of talking to a more senior person. They love to give you advice. And when you connect with some new person on LinkedIn, well, humans, right? So. Praise them on something you notice they do well. Find something maybe you have in something you have in common with them. Hey, you play chess. I play chess. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have necessarily be related with with your industry or what you do, right? So, so anyway, that's yeah. that's my that's my advice on how to how to engage someone. You know, if you if you're not sure how to get about it. Just to. Um, Oh, sorry. Go Thank ahead, you so much. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, no, no. I just wanted to add my experience a little bit. Like, I come from, you know, taught, I did not come from English background, right? And when you you did never grow up in that background, it becomes so much hard to even study science, right? Because a lot of keywords or terms in science are in English, right? And I used to study in Hindi. Think of that <laughs> it, till my bachelor's, you know bachelor's in science right um, but I think all of the point put by the panelist here that you know I was just thinking asking for help or advice itself is an imposter syndrome like people fear to be being judged you know if I ask a help people may feel that I'm not qualified I don't know so many things right and I was just thinking about you know my current situation so if the baby is didn't cry the mother doesn't know how when to feed right so it is if this is basic level that without letting the next person know that you need advice how can people help right and of course i understand you ask 10 people only two people may help but you just want two people to help you don't want 10 people to help right so that's one thing and i was in my phd program and i come from rural background and, and then all the people come from very repeated phd background you know masters in various places and i was the topper of the program but I didn't know how to communicate. I, for one year, I was just silent. I was not talking 
to any of the fellows much. And then I hit like, okay, how I'm going to survive in this situation for next four years, right? Five years. So, so it's like a need. So when you feel a need or urge of something, things come internally, like they explode, right? So, so that's where here it is. Like if you feel the urge of networking, talking, and you think that there is a value, as everyone was saying, identify what you want. And then I think it will come naturally. And of course, you have to be on the platform. So if you are on Instagram and Facebook two hours every day, but not even one hour every week on LinkedIn, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> so so that's, uh, I think, three points I just wanted to add. Um, yes, Eric. Uh, um, no, this is good. This is because um, I think that... Um, I feel like everybody here knows that we need to be on LinkedIn, right? Like people know that we need to be branding. I mean, that's why we're here. Like academics don't get the 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 space. Um, in May 2020, when I got onto LinkedIn first, uh, I, I mean, there, the reason I started higher higher is because I didn't feel like there were any academics there. Um, they're just there. There's one of the people there. And so just here, here, here's what I'll say. Um, the hardest part about all of this is knowing what to do and, and, and not, not, not the things that you need to do. Like, you know that, like, you know, you need to post, but what do you post? That's the hardest thing that we need to be coming to. Um, I just keep going to this phrase from Cavarero that each of us are unrepeatable and unique, right? A recruiter is landing on your profile because they have a specific problem that they want to solve. And if they land in your profile and you try to sell that you can solve a whole bunch of different problems, they're going to be like, oh, that's great. They don't know what they want to do. And they'll move on to the next one. They can review 100 profiles in an hour and make a decision about whether or not you fit, right? Rather than trying to fit into everything, a shotgun approach, take a sniper rifle approach, right? Take a scalpel approach. Say, I want to do this specific thing. And there are going to be hundreds of jobs that fit that categorization because job titles work the way that synonyms do, Right. You want to reverse engineer your perfect job. Make a list of everything that you love to do. Then highlight everything that you want to do. And then look at that. Is that a job that you want to do for your life? And then how do you talk about everything you've done using that professional language now? The reason that you are feeling this way about you not knowing what to do is because this is a moment of panic, discouragement, and fear. Every single person in this vid virtual room has accomplished so much. Only 2% of the world has a PhD, right? Not very many people get to this advanced level of education. You are interesting. You are. Write about it. Sincerely, the first thing you need to do is post, is post. And then use that as an opportunity to explore, right? Because what you're doing constantly writing your narrative over and over is that when you're in a conversation with someone and someone asks you, what does this have to do with a data analytics job? You've been practicing that narrative over and over and over in your head that you don't sound like you're stretching when someone asks you that question. You just know how to answer it. This is a moment of panic, a moment of panic. Embrace that. Pick a path and then run. People want someone who's running, not someone who's sitting waiting to be told what to do. I, I, I want to make two points. So yes, well, the first point is yes, Eric, then the two more points. <laughs> uh, so let me start by, you know, a lot of, a lot of PhDs go into the job search um, starting at the end. And so what do I mean by that? A lot of PhDs think that the first thing they have to do is convert a CV, an academic CV into a resume for non-academic jobs. Uh, and, and there, and also a lot of PhDs think that they need to therefore brand their LinkedIn. And I, that's, that's what you do at the end. So what do I mean when I say that? So the simplified version of what I teach PhDs about how to, how to conduct a job search. Um, well, really the kind of step zero here is like, don't panic, <laughs> right? like what's going on in your brain. But then let me break it down kind of after that, the first three, well, the three steps. Number one, focus on yourself, 
right? So that's self-reflection, self-assessment. You could do this all on your own. It's great to involve other people in this, please do. But really, you know, this is on who you are. What do you want to do, right? Uh, and right, so focus on yourself. Um, when I teach this at the end, um, I have uh, my students do a focus statement. It's like a mission statement, but it's just for you. It might morph into something that you put in LinkedIn, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to give you an anchor, right? When everything else is uncertain and swirling and chaotic, right, you have an anchor and that's your focus statement. Then step two, I call identify possibilities. And that's when you go out and you research what could be out there for you? And a big piece of that is going to be doing informational interviews. Uh, that's not all of it, but that's a big piece. And yeah, you can use LinkedIn to make some of those connections. So that's step two. And at the end of that, you've got kind of a, a short a short list, not, not too many things, but a short list of possibilities in terms of job titles or employers, right? You've identified the location where you want to work, one or two places maybe. Okay. Then in step three, and this is where people want to start, this is the end, I call market to employers. And that's when you're going to worry about really optimizing your LinkedIn profile for recruiters, right? You, you had a LinkedIn profile before, but now you're really going to brand it properly. You're going to write that about section. You're going to worry about resumes now, right? So, so if you're starting at the end, well, no wonder, no wonder you're freaked out. Like just chill, just chill, right? Go back to the beginning. Second point um, to make here is that asking for help is a skill and a strength. So if you, if you need to take a sticky note and write this and stick it on your computer screen, <laughs> asking for help is a skill and a strength. It's a good thing. I just remind yourself of maybe make that your new mantra because I get it. I get it right. It, it, in academia, it can feel like, you know, that's not what you do as a successful person but it is what you do. It's one of those secrets. So asking for help is a good thing. It's a skill and a strength. It's how you show up as a leader in the world. It's how you impress people. It's how you begin real meaningful conversations. Getting off soapbox. Paul, and you're muted. I don't think Pawan realizes that he's muted. Can I unmute him? Let's see. <laughs> Sorry. So um, I was just saying that uh, as things are flowing in the chat and and we have a, four, four questions, I ju I'll just read for all of, all of us. So first question was, how do you make your LinkedIn profile appealing to range of audience? You mean different positions, I think the person is saying. I'm interested in another question. I'm interested in a couple of different type of positions and wonder how to brand myself in a way that does not exclude one, but also does not necessarily combine them. For instance, one of my areas, there is detail about it. Um, the third one is if we want to do a job and we don't have a particular industry, what is the best way to navigate what industry to put on our profile. I just keep changing mine every couple of weeks. So the person keeps changing the LinkedIn profile every week. That's fine. No <laughs> worries. Until you know, don't worry about it. Yeah, it is. Uh, the fourth one, is it the best way to only search for the job in just one specific industry, even if you have multiple interests? So I think the whole these questions are aligned towards how do you build your profile, which is appealing to multiple type of job you are seeking? Um, and how to keep it interesting for variety of audience. Yeah, so uh, let's get started. Uh, Eric, uh, do you want to go first? And um, yeah, I think we, we kind of talked about this in the chat a little bit, like the idea of, well, I want to do this or I want to do this. Um, like, which one do I talk about? Um, my, I mean, that becomes a very interesting intersection, right? There, there's a reason that you love this thing and there's a reason that you love this thing. They are not unrelated. They relate because you find them interesting. And that's who they're going to hire is you, the interesting intersection, right? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that's, that's a uh, full stop. <laughs> like be, be, be that. And okay, I'll add this too, okay? I think that so many of us, right, think that our future is going to be tied to our subject matter expertise that we've developed. Like if you're a chemist, you're going to be a, like you have to do something with chemistry. 
Mm -mm, no, no. You are going to find your future job based on everything that you've done to accomplish that knowledge expertise, right? If you're a chemist, you're a really good project manager. You're a really good UX researcher. You're a really good data analyst. You're a really good marketer. Um, marketing, like someone asked about marketing, marketing and sales, I think are two great places for people to enter just to get into, like if you wanted to like, make a quick jump. Um, but understand that when you're thinking about your identity, academia has trained you that your identity is associated with your knowledge expertise. Mm -mm. Your value in industry is gonna be based on everything you did to develop that knowledge expertise. Then your knowledge expertise becomes a case study, an example of how you're great. Not everybody needs a chemist. Everybody needs a project manager. Yes, yeah, I think that's very valuable advice to to know that there is a value. And I, I think this is it, this this mindset I call academically conditioned mindset it spreads all over the life of the individual. You know, asking for advice. Why people don't ask? Because they th we are taught that if you ask advice, you have to give authorship in publications. So let's not get into take help much. You know, ask PI's first recommendation to take help. So there is a third person controlling your desire to network or talk to people. Then here, what was Eric was mentioning, right? The same thing that um, we really think that we are what we do. But <laughs> as a profession uh, for earning our bread and butter, you know, to survive in the life, right? But that's not the case. I can tell you with my example, like, I mean, to be honest, Revelation, I never wanted to do PhD and I still I don't like to do too much of research because I think that it's not adding a lot of value immediately uh, when I'm gonna living on the planet. It may be once I leave the body, I am not there. So who cares when I'm not there and something happens, right? So I'm selfish in the sense that I want to see the impact things are. And that's why, you know, conduct the sessions you know, I'm a scientist, I don't have to do all this. But the reason I come because it's a, I love helping. And this was I was never taught in my PhD, right? I don't have any paper on uh, on saying that I love helping, right? I don't. But it, it's a discovery. So I think all the panelists, you know, especially Eric and other people will add that find your uh, your non research side of personality, you know, bring that. And this is the time and, and this is going to give you a lot of fulfillment. Uh, so let's uh, with that, I'll stop. I'll not speak too much. Um, we'll go to uh, John Michel and then and Jennifer. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I think I think we've covered some great, great uh, things here. And, you know, we we've all asked that, you know, and, I, you know, I, I questioned myself, too. You know, I was I was doing the same thing kind of. I thought I was doing the same thing for 20 years, right? Designing spacecraft, writing codes. And then it's like, okay, I want to reinvent myself, but can, uh, you, you feel like you can't do anything else, right? Because that's what I've done all my life. What else can I do, right? Who is going to hire me? And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> like, uh, like Eric was saying earlier, it's not about the things you do. It's the skills you use to do those things. Right? And it's really what you're marketing. So you're not marketing the job you're doing or job title, you're marketing the skills you're using to do the job, okay? And then you, you look at how those skills can be applied to other industry, other areas, other type of jobs. So uh, it's all about how you present yourself. And I get this question all the time. I know somebody, some, somebody asked me, says, well, I've never done this job before. You know, <clears throat> can, I, can I go that job? So typically, so I work with clients and I ask them this question. It says, okay, do you think you can do the job of your boss? Okay, you can ask yourself this question. Can you do the job of your boss? And a lot of the time you're going to be surprised. You can say, actually, I can because anytime he takes off for a long vacation or something, guess what? He puts me in charge and I'm doing all the work, you know? And then he gets used, for, he gets used to me doing the work even so I don't get paid for it, right? So, um, so if, you, if you want... If you want a specific job and you have clarity on that, brand yourself as if you're already doing that job. Okay, so don't be afraid of that. And it's all about how you tell the stories because guess what? You were already doing that job before. 
You know, you just have to, to pick out the right stories of accomplishments, some of the things you've done in your career that, that fit exactly into what you want to do now and tell the story. <clears throat> and remember, we all, we're not job hunters, we are all problem solvers. That's all we are, okay? You need to, to change your mindset. You're not a job hunter, <clears throat> you're not a such and such job title, you are a problem solver using specific skills. So how do you tell a great story? So my boss came to me with a special problem to solve. So I highlight what was the problem. Number two, you know, I came up with a solution to solve that problem. So I like the solution. Number three, implementation. How did you implement the solution of the problem for the solving the problem? And number four or five, I don't know where we are anymore, right? Uh, results and accomplishment. Did you get the results you expected? And finally, did you get any recognition for a job well done? Okay, so that's how you tell a great story. Okay, what was the problem? The solution you came up with, implementation, results, recognition. So, uh, and, and we have clients, they, they rewrite their work experiences this way using this model. You know, you could be like, okay, what are you doing? Well, I'm a manager, what do you do? Well, I manage my team. Okay, <laughs> tell me something I don't know. Tell me something exciting. Well, humans, we, are, we, we love stories, right? This is why we love to watch reality TV, sh TV shows, right? Because we are looking at people who are faced with a challenge or who are, who are overcoming a terrible things that happen in their life. And we see them rising up from the ashes, solving the problem, right? So that's, that's how you tell a great story. Okay, so you tell a great story and that's how you connect emotionally and you're going to see, you want to stand out, that's how you're going to stand out. The way you present your accomplishment in the form of great stories to connect with humans, to connect with the reader. Thank you, Don, Masil. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's very important part. And I think people can use that while writing your about summary on LinkedIn, you know. Somebody was asking in the chat, what to write can i write everything i don't think you can write pages many pages but it's like your abstract of your journey and and, and you can look at someone's profile and just learn from them also right how did they write so just to add that um yes jennifer Jen yeah sure right? yeah so, so i tweeted yesterday um twitter by the way i'm from phd to life um so some of you might have seen this but this is a quick reframing exercise so a ton of phds um think of themselves and talk about themselves and write in emails about themselves like this. You know, I'm a PhD in X with a specialization in Y. And that's all focused on content, knowledge, subject matter, expertise. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but that not, that story that you're telling about yourself, right? That's a story that you're telling about yourself. It is not the only story that you can tell about yourself. So um, here's two sentences to say, instead of saying that, you could say this. So I'm PhD in X with a specialization in Y. That same person could say, for example, I currently work as a social science researcher. What I find most meaningful is developing insights that lead to positive health policy change, right? So exact same person, but totally different story, totally different message, right? So you wanna figure out what, who is your audience here and what do they need to hear from you uh, so that they can make decisions that affect your life. Um, so just remember, there's lots of different true stories about you, uh, what is true and also useful for you going forward. And I also, again, I'm here making two points. I, I wanna talk briefly about what, is, what to say, what to write, when you're asking people to do an informational interview, for example. Uh, and I think there's been some really great advice already shared. Um, so, uh, so subject line, if you're writing an email, you, there's no subject line on LinkedIn, but I, you know, can I, informational interview question mark is perfectly fine. You know, can I talk to you about your career question mark? I mean, I don't, wouldn't overthink the subject line, just have one, make it descriptive. 
dear Jean-Michel, um, I participated in the panel discussion that you gave yesterday, and I was really uh, excited to hear you talk specifically about, and then you mentioned it, right? So that establishes a connection. Why do you know Jean-Michel? And there's a bit of flattery built in there, which is always nice. So that twigs something, right, in his brain, like, oh, nice, cool, okay, I feel good. Uh, why are you writing? Uh, I would love uh, to talk more with you about why, um, and then why is this important to you? I'm currently looking to transition into the whatever career space, you know, that's relevant to him. So very briefly, uh, you can say something again, super briefly about yourself, no paragraphs, you know, I'm currently a doctoral candidate at blah, uh, studying blah, that's fine. Do you have 20 minutes uh, in the next couple of weeks for a phone or Zoom conversation. And then optionally, if you know, to take the extra step, you can plop your uh, calendar link right in there. Uh, that, that's a bit of a bold thing to do, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But what are we talking about here? Five, six sentences, you're, you have one call to action. Uh, you're very clear what it is. You've made a little bit of flattery. You haven't gone on and on. You've asked a very clear question. If Jean-Michel doesn't answer you, I would say in the next few days, next week, just respond. Hey, popping back in your inbox, making sure you saw my last message. I'd still love to talk with you. Alternatively, if you're not the right person, if you think there's somebody better that I should be speaking with who's more aligned with my interests, I'd love a recommendation. So don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Uh, just send that email and that will get easier over time. Yeah, yeah, that that's perfectly works. And I can, you know, I can echo and say that I've been trying and, and, and it really works. You know, you create a template. Don't just just send request and, you know, do what you call massive networking and <laughs> just do effective networking. So, so with that, let's, uh, if it is okay, we'll move on to the next question, which is another interesting one uh, coming, you know, we had from people. So um, the next one is, which is, I sorry, uh, which is more or less uh, going to be related with what we have been talking, but let's get into that. So the question is that, uh, how do we decide which people to connect? and start networking. What are the best words to use, which already Jennifer has is described, reaching out people for networking and asking for interviews. Um, the next one is that, uh, how to brand myself for something you have not done yet. So something like you are not uh, is a scientist in industry, but how do you brand that you are, right? Um, so, how to connect with hiring HR, even if one is not actively looking for a job change. So basically it's more of uh, uh, networking without a direct purpose, right? So these are questions which are, you know, which are more or less many time confusing for the, for the people. So I would really love to hear your thoughts that how do people connect to someone um, they, they, they don't know what to do with with them and how to brand themselves if they are not what they want to be, right? They are still exploring um, a specific career and how do you decide whom to connect? Um, here's what I'd recommend, right? So I'd recommend talking to 100 people. Right? That's the, the, the kind of industry advice, right? So you find 10 companies where you think you'd want to work and find 10 people who are working in that company um, and then ask them for that informational interview using the advice that Jen gave. I think that's great advice. Um, your goal in an informational interview is twofold. One is that you want to be memorable, right? You want to talk to a problem solver because when they have a problem, they want to think of you, right? That's, that's how I got my job, my first job as a data analyst. I, did, I didn't know what SQL was or Tableau was until two days after I got hired, right? I went into a, talking to the CEO of an ed tech company and said, I don't know what you do. You give me three months. I'll be one of your best employees that you have. That's just the nature of a PhD, right? And we can go and talk about more of that later. But he called me three days later. He's like, I think I got a job for you. Do you know anything about data? I was like, no, but I can learn. He's like, yeah, you can. And the, the reason that I got that 
the, the first thing he said to me on the phone call was I was sitting at my desk or I have a pile of work on my desk. I'm sitting at my deck and I don't want to do it. And I thought of you. And so I called you be memorable, right? Um, as to who you should be reaching out to. Um, oh yeah, I already said the 10 by 10 thing. So yeah, uh, I'll full stop. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, we can go to Jen. Uh, okay. Any specific question you want me to address? I think the question is about, um, how do you brand yourself for something you don't, you have not yet done, right? You, you did not achieve, but it's like more of how do I, how do I brand or behave on social media in a way that I want to become a policy expert or, you know, in certain areas. Yeah. So yeah. You can, well, thank yeah. Thank you. Uh, so think about what you have done that is relevant. So just, just because your experience wasn't called policy advisor, uh, doesn't mean you don't have policy advising experience. So what have you done that is relevant? So this is transferable skills, right? Uh, just because you haven't engaged with stakeholders, well, you have. <laughs> navigated relationship building with students, uh, other TAs, uh, instructors, uh, the dean, right? So you have engaged with stakeholders. You just didn't call it that. So think about uh, your the experience that you do have and then draw those connections. Um, don't lie, of course, um, but you can always say like, you know, if pushed, no, I have. I don't have this this particular experience. What I have done is, and that that connects with what you do because blah blah blah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. And just to add before we go to Jen Michel, that um, most of you know time the the block is in the mind about um, if I people think academically, you know that. For example, a very sold out thing, doing MBA if you want to get into industry or, or business side of or the job after academia. I, I, you know, you don't need a degree for everything you do in your life, right? So that has to be, you know, think thought through that. How can you, you have done marketing a lot in your PhD or not consciously, but unconsciously. So think of that example and, and probably, you know, um, Michelle, I will add more onto that, that we have a lot of things inherent, but you just need to put on the table that everybody have been talking at right time, place and circumstance in, in a matter, in a manner, these stories. Yeah. Yeah. All those smalls, you know, actually, if I, if I talk to my students again, now tell them, don't go for a PhD, <laughs> you know, I'll be like, you know, you're going to spend hours, years and years. And then, uh, you know, unless you really want to know, you want to stay in the science field or stay in like, academia, et cetera, right. Make a career of it. But anyway, so, uh, um, uh, because number one, you know, you, you're more expensive for, uh, to, to be hired by your next employer and they're, they're rather, they're rather higher a master degree maybe right so anyway sorry to say that but that would be my advice now compared to 10 years ago right but uh so the, you know, the idea i think is that you you want to start connecting into the industry you want to go into right so just like eric was saying so you you want to start connecting with people in the right industry uh you want to identify companies you would love to work with you know uh, the beauty, the beautiful thing with LinkedIn, if you have a premium account and you're looking for jobs on LinkedIn, okay, so there are, there are about right now, uh, probably 7 million jobs available in the US on LinkedIn right now, okay. The beauty of a premium account is uh, it will help you networking because LinkedIn will tell you, we, we, we show you the alumni, your, your alumni that work at that company. LinkedIn will show you your connection that worked at that company. So those are great networking opportunity for you guys to get your foot in the door with this company, right? And you can do the informational uh, interview, you can do the air, uh, you know, uh, asking for air and advice, etc. Some similar strategies. Uh, I'll give you an example of a client. So I, I talked to a client a few months ago and, and, she, and she told me, Jean-Michel, I hate my job, 
Okay, I've been I've been doing this job for years and years and years and I hate my job. And then we we we're working towards well, what do you enjoy doing? Why are you still in there? Well, this is because I, I love organizing you know, employee employee picnics. You know, everything that has to do with with uh, you know engaging our employees, you know, uh, uh, training our employees, you know, outings, you know, uh, uh, and then so then we figured out, okay, so you know, it looks like you would be a great event planner. Where he says, yeah, Jean-Michel, I'd love to be an event planner, but I have no experience. Who is going to hire me? He says, well, what do you mean you have no experience? You haven't been paid for being an event planner, but you have been doing the job. You've been using the skills. You have a rural dox of contacts, right? For, uh, for venues, for food, for uh, locations, uh, you know, vacation spots. He says, yeah, well, so you have actually been doing the job as an event planner, okay? So uh, again, it, uh, like Jennifer was saying, it's about extracting anything out of your experience that is relevant to what you want to do next. Okay, and it's all about how you present your story. It's all about you pack how you package your experience. You know, that's that's really where the where the magic happens. It's how you repackage those skills you've been using. Okay. Uh, did I answer all those questions? Uh, about yeah. I'm not sure. Yes, yes, yeah. No, no, no. very okay. much I, relevant. So. I know we're all over the place sometimes. I know no, I, no, no, no. <laughs> we, are, we are kind of reaching to the time. So maybe okay. we'll take uh, now. I think we covered almost all the other questions we had. Like there were some questions how to become visible to recruiters. We covered already. How should you make sure your profile is catches attention done? How to be more simple in our branding and networking? how what are the key things that hiring authority is looking for i think we covered with the panelist you know talking a lot of other things uh, there were some questions that does do hiring managers compare resume cv and linkedin profile yes they do look for you know consistency is the key so don't make inconsistent things in cv and linkedin um, how does companies differentiate normal profile and overhyped i don't think we are doing like <laughs> spy research so don't get into that, that how people looking for high profile um premium pros premium account is is required but i would say if you can't afford it that does not mean that you are not visible i have never had premium account i just got three months free from linkedin itself so i'm just i'm using i never paid for it and if you want to try the one month is free so you can be one month active try everything and if it helps you use it for another month but you can use month by month um, uh, while conducting informational interviews uh, that's another whole section okay so i think these are all questions if you have a specific question we have another five minutes or two or two or four minutes maybe we can take one questions if anybody has you can unmute yourself ask uh, questions I want to ask a question. Hey, Mayur. Yes, go ahead. Hi. Uh, uh, they said that you have to write your story and uh, say the people or recruiters that uh, what you have accomplished and what you came through and how much you struggled. But isn't it playing a sympathy card? How do you have to write that? How does it not look like a sympathy card? Okay. Yeah. Can I go with that? All right. What's, yes, say that. What's, yeah. what's wrong with that? Right. Um, it's not a sympathy card. Right. It's understanding that you are a human person. Right. If you write your story following the advice of both Jean and Jen. Right. And then if you read it and you realize that that story is true of 5000 people, it's not a story about you. Right. You. So rhetoric. Right. Is the use of pathos, ethos and logos. A nice balance of the three. Right. Pathos is an emotional appeal. You want to make an emotional appeal. You want to engage in sympathy. You want a human connection. If you don't have that, then you sound like 5,000 other people who have that same exact wording about your passion for public health or whatever, right? If there's not a concrete detail about you as an individual person, when that person, when that recruiter is done looking through, like imagine, put yourself in that shoes of the recorder of the, the recruiter. They are looking through 100 profiles in an hour. Does yours stand out in any way? The way it will stand out is through sympathy and human connection. 
That's also why when you post, you can attach pictures. You can talk about your vacation. You can say that you just had a new baby, right? I mean, t Twitter is a little bit more personal in this way, but you can totally do some of that on LinkedIn. Professionals can get massive engagement on those posts. I, I remember one professor in particular uh, gave a shout out to his father who got an award, you know, back in his home country, Mexico, and it got like hundreds of comments because it's so engaged, it's human, right? Right? It's so engaging. It's highly memorable. And there was absolutely nothing unprofessional about it. It was just a glimpse into his personal life and something that he was personally proud of. It was awesome. Okay. We have some counter question about this. Okay. Let's assume that I don't post about the story or uh, let's say in my opinion, the sympathy card but i post about my accomplishments and my uh, skills or my expertise that i can contribute to the company that i'll be joining or to my future self for the betterment of the organization how does that help do do i take this one is that okay mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so there are, as everybody is saying that there is a space and time when these things are discussed okay so definitely you don't want to be like complainer person on linkedin or talking all that you know negative things or everything right but you can talk all this so for example finding a find first problem in you know first first target on linkedin to find a hit time find a lead for your job right so the whole idea is to go based on your values, your qualification, and based on your, you know, if you have certain impactful story. Um, and the whole searching happens on keywords and everything. So surely, whatever story you're writing, they should include your keywords in your areas you're looking for. You don't want to, you know, and the regular posting, you can use your stories posting as everybody is saying, right? Um, so that all your skill set and everything goes as a keyword in your creating your profile. And what we are talking is to maintaining your profile, being visible on LinkedIn. This is a, together a different story, a different way of communicating, different way of being active, right? Is that make sense? So, so we did not cover a lot of making your profile. So that is another, another realm of LinkedIn. How do you have the right keywords and we touched on it but but there is a huge amount of technical things there so so i posted a, a youtube link video we had a whole discussion on that in last year so if you want to watch uh, on that side i think that would be helpful uh, is that helpful mayor yes it was helpful thank you yeah. thank you so if not then uh, we will try to you know conclude so um give give me a minute i'll share my screen i have something to so or maybe not so let's not do that we don't have time so first of all i just wanted to you know thank you to all the panelists for such an engaging discussion this is one of the unique event i think with us uh, in nice time care a lot of lot of discussion i and i really never felt that people were not knowing each other there's a lot of discussion here so one of the ways to give back is to give feedback for anything you you do and i just wanted to request everyone to write notes on linkedin tagging these panelists people i still care us if you got benefited anything from it just use two three lines tag us write us write about the event you know take snapshot of the here event post it that's how you give back right uh, because this is a free event. Nobody is being charged for anything. The second point that I'll send you out uh, a feedback form. And if you could give your two minutes, just, you know, take optional questions and give the feedback. And I'll, that I'll share back to the panelists and they will have that one as a new proud moment that it was it was helpful that they spent their one and a half hour out of Saturday morning. So, and, and third point I wanted to add that if you if you are looking for opportunity to volunteer and you're really not finding ways to you know get started you know you can visit our website join us volunteer we don't we are not recruiting you 
but we, we want people who can help other people. So that's the whole platform of volunteering. It's uh, every time weekend work, we all work full time somewhere. Uh, so try to, you know, join us and work with us and do such events. The fourth point, which is very important, most of you are PhDs and postdocs somewhere in the US or anywhere. A lot of resources, resources exist in your university, okay, free. And I have used during my postdoc. Almost everything was free. And, and I just was using those resources. You have a postdoc society, you have, you have a lot of working groups, which are you know free to join and work. So use that. And if you want any help with your LinkedIn profile you are creating or anything, reach out to these people. Eric Jen or Jen Maishu for any help I'm I can tell you that they are very helpful I've been knowing them from last one year and and they're amazing people so so just reach out they may be delayed they may not respond sometime everybody has life something going on but they will surely respond to you use the message not everything writing onto the feed or you know onto the directly on the comment section but you can message them personally and, and communicate with them there. So with that, uh, I'll close the session here. And thankfully we are on time. So that's another accomplishment. So thank you so much everyone for joining and thank you panelists uh, for joining today. Thank you for having us, Paul, and again, have a great weekend, bye-bye. Yes, thank you so much. This was so much fun, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Love pontificating. Just stay for 30 seconds. I'll take a screenshot for, for the panelists. And I already took for the whole event. And this will go <laughs> on to social media. Uh, yeah. Or, or other people also can unmute or, you know, use your videos. I, I can take another one if you are okay. All right. So just give me 30 seconds. Okay. B, just act. Uh, I'm going to gallery view. So if you un open your cameras. It would look really nice seeing faces of people who have been talking here. So, <laughs> all right. So I think I'm going. I'll say one, two, three, and then you can have your favorite expression. So, <laughs> okay, one, two, three. All right. So with that, uh, have a good weekend. Uh, take care of yourself, and bye bye. See you. Should have all done trek. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.